Kelly asked if I'd introduced Craig rather than just sort of introducing himself, which is a bit sort of impolite, which I'm very happy to do. Um, while you've been assembling, I've just been quickly looking up the speech I gave at the uh, formal public uh, council meeting, um, at which I uh, introduced Craig as Lord Mayor to the worthies of the city. Um, I'm not going to repeat that now. It wouldn't necessarily be appropriate anyway. Uh, many of you know of Craig, obviously. It's, see many quotes in the papers and all that kind of stuff. But maybe stuff that you don't know. Um, I mean, obviously, Craig's been... You don't get to be Lord Mayor unless you've been a councillor for a long time. And he certainly has, both on the city council um, and also on the county um, some years ago. Um, I think uh, he'll correct me if I'm wrong, but it's at least 15 years and uh, probably more like 20, I think. So very, very experienced. See a lot of uh, changes in Oxford. Um, I think it would be fair to say that the manifesto that we had in 1995 is starting to mature and starting to be taken seriously. Um, starting to be implemented even in some cases. Uh, Craig's been there throughout all of this. Uh, through good times and bad. Um, Craig, unlike me, uh, I mean, I have uh, whatever gifts I can bring to the role of councillor, whatever they may be, but Craig um, punches well above my weight, I have to say, and is highly respected. Um, that isn't always necessarily true of Lord Mayors, but in Craig's case, that really is very much the case and he has been for a long time for a number of reasons um not least because he really knows his stuff um on green issues in fact um in the late 90s was responsible for co-authoring a book in which was the first book in which the word footprinting carbon footprinting was used in writing at the beginning of all of that um craig founded a a company which was the first in the world, I think, to do carbon footprinting for companies um, and not just small companies either. If I remember, Craig, you had a contract from Pepsi. I think you did the Moscow Olympics, or if you didn't do it personally, your company did. It's the fastest growing management consultancy in the, com in the country um, and gone global. Um, and, and that's kind of Craig's other life. But of course, what it brings to the council is just an immense amount of experience and knowledge and they know it. Um, so although the Green Party does have influence within the city uh, and Craig will no doubt be speaking about that, quite how much influence it can have, especially when there's a minority of councillors, it's also the kind of clout and weight of individual councillors that counts for stuff. And Craig certainly does, of course, not only knowing the carbon stuff and the green issues from the from the early 90s late 80s onwards um also being a businessman um uh, and that means being on top of finance and craig will be the first to say he's not the expert on finance but compared with most councillors i have to say um he absolutely is and set pieces in the council's life like doing the budgeting that's where the rubber hits the road, really, when you're produ producing budgets, because that's where, you know, all the fine talk has to uh, turn into actual action and money being spent. Uh, that's where it really counts. And Craig's work on the budgets has been first rate. Of course, the Labour Party always vote them out um, because they couldn't be they couldn't possibly vote for the amendments that uh, we put to their budget. But actually, they do implement them usually. And that's largely down to the work and experience that Craig brings to it. Um, Craig has been, I mean, personally speaking, of, of, of course, I mean, I found myself uh, joining, uh, I joined the party in 2009, found myself elected to my own amazement in, in 2010, um, green in more senses than one, and was very fortunate that uh, I was sharing the ward with Craig because who better to act as a sidekick too, frankly. And I'm still there. And that's probably largely no, uh, no small thanks to Craig because I'm sure they think they're voting for him when they vote for me. <laughs> and we'll see what happens next May. Um, anyway, Craig, I've seen enough, I've probably embarrassed you a bit. I could probably embarrass you a little bit more and tell stories of your heavy metal days. 
but uh, I'll spare spare you that and uh, hand over to you uh, if you want to tell us what it is to be a green councillor, uh, what we can do, what we can't do, um, why it really is important to get people elected, and above all, the craziness of being a Lord Mayor. Over to you. Yeah, no, thanks for that. It was pretty embarrassing, but thank you. Um, yeah, so hopefully everyone can hear me okay and see that I'm in this wonderful, I'm not really in the Lord Mayor's Parlour, but this is what the Lord Mayor's Parlour would look like under normal circumstances if I was uh, addressing you from the parlour. Uh, I do have this, as Lord Mayor, you do get this wonderful room uh, at, the, at the council chamber, so if we do get back in at any point into the town hall, which has been closed since lockdown, uh, then I would invite people to, to come along. And even if I'm no longer Lord Mayor, then I'm sure we can find a way of getting people into the room. Uh, so I'm going to talk really, um, I mean, I'm going to have time for questions at the end. Uh, if people want to sort of ask more general questions about being a councillor and the influence Greens can have. But I'm just going to focus in this sort of series of slides I've got really about my sort of turbulent time as Lord Mayor. And, uh, of Oxford and of course I, at the time it's a year you only get to be Lord Mayor for a year but mine's been 18 months or will be 18 months by the end of November when I will leave the role so you know that gives you an idea of the, of the turbulence I think I'm probably the only Lord Mayor to have served 18 months since at least the 1960s when the role of Lord Mayor became Lord Mayor so uh, maybe the only one I don't know um so uh it, really what's happened is sort of Brexit, the climate emergency, lockdown, and I turned 60 as well during that year. So all very turbulent things that happened to me. And I'll go through some, some of them, um, and, and but but leave lots of time for questions. So um, so local government in, in sort of uh, the UK looks, in England, actually looks a little bit like this. It's a little bit chaotic and messy because we haven't don't have a formal constitution. So <clears throat> local government has really come about by a sort of precedent and on top of precedent, so it's very messy. But basically, you know, I'm the Lord Mayor for Oxford City, and that's a district council that sits within Oxfordshire, which is the county council, and has, you know, uh, impinges on two parliamentary constituencies, Oxford East and Oxford West and Abingdon. So, and, and we have within Oxford also several parish councils. So, you know, the city council has responsibility for things like housing and leisure and planning and pollution, waste disposal and recycling and public green spaces, but, but it does go well beyond its sort of statutory duties and, and does a fair amount of other things. The county on the other hand, which is conservative run, uh, with a sort of uh, help of some independence, is sort of mainly responsible for education, schools, wildlife, transport and social services. You can see the county budget is a lot bigger than the city budget. Um, and that's mainly because it has some big ticket items like education and social services within it. Uh, city has a sort of smaller budget, it's Labour run at the moment, there's 48 councillors uh, on the city council and the Greens have, have two. And uh, we'll get on to some of that if people want to ask questions about the sort of politics of that i will get on to that later happy to do that under the q a so here's the sort of mayoral timeline so the first recorded mayor of oxford was in 1122 so i'm the 897th mayor of oxford the the role of law mayor only came into being in 1962 when the sort of queen elizabeth ii sort of conferred that sort of uh, honour onto Oxford. So there's 27, I think, Lord Mayors around the, the country. Um, and I was became the 57th Lord Mayor uh, in 2019. It seems a long time ago now, pre-COVID and pre-everything else. Um, normally, um, a Lord Mayor can only serve for one year. Uh, you can only be a Lord Mayor once as a councillor, no matter how long you're elected for. And we're called the first citizen of Oxford, and that sort of gives an insight into the role that Lord Mayors have. Um, you, you also have their other civic office roles, so uh, Sheriff and Deputy Lord Mayor, and you typically held those, those roles before you become Lord Mayor. So essentially you have three years in civic office to get used to, to the role. You normally have a year as Sheriff 
a year as deputy Lord Mayor, not necessarily concurrently, uh, before you become Lord Mayor. Some people do it in an, another order, but that's the order that most people do it in, which makes most sense. You get a chance to deputise for the Lord Mayor before you actually become the Lord Mayor. So what are the roles and responsibilities? So it used to be the Lord Mayor um, was only the role that wealthy landowners, business people and others with titles. So 22 previous Lord Mayors of the 50 odd uh, were knighted, gives you an idea. And the Lord Mayor's parlour, you couldn't see from the, from the background here. Maybe you can see up somewhere up there. Um, there's loads of um, crests uh, of all the different uh, noble families that have held the position of Lord Mayor. And it's quite funny because there's these little sort of plinths all the way around, all the way around up there, um, which um, each hold the crests of all the families that have been Lord Mayors. And clearly the idea was there'd be very many more um, mayors, Lord Mayors that came from sort of privileged backgrounds, but actually many of the plinths stand empty. And that's a, an indication of the fact that um, more recently, the Lord Mayor has indeed been anyone. Anyone can serve as Lord Mayor as long as you've been long enough on the council to earn that honour. So I, I was on the council for 20 years before being Lord Mayor. You don't have to be there for 20 years. It really depends on sort of seniority, who's the most senior councillor who hasn't previously been Lord Mayor. So you can theoretically be Lord Mayor after sort of 10, 11 years. I think at much less than that would be unusual. And so you can come from any background. You can be a, a woman Lord Mayor. And in fact, uh, Elise, my, my wife, who's on the call, oh, was women. Lord Mayor before yeah. me. Um, and uh, after you're chosen by and appointed by fellow councillors. So what happens is that we have a council meeting normally every year. Uh, annual council is called where you not you vote for um, who's going to be Lord Mayor. Now it's all tied up in advance with agreement amongst all the political leaders who's going to do it because you don't just suddenly everyone votes for someone to be Lord Mayor because it's rather more thought has to go into it than that because it's it's a big commitment. Uh, so it's normally wrapped up in my case it was decided in September 2018 so I didn't become Lord Mayor until May 2019. I knew uh, in September 2018, the agreement was there, you know who's the, who's the councillor who's been there the longest, who hasn't already been Lord Mayor, and they're sort of pushed up this, uh, it's called the list. It's called where you go up, work your way up the list, and then suddenly you get offered one of the civic roles, either Sheriff, which Dick's going to be doing next year, or Deputy Lord Mayor, or Lord Mayor. And, and the key thing I've underlined it there is you're meant to act as politically impartial representative of the city. So I'll get onto some of that. And that's why I've tried to keep this presentation uh, politically impartial. But I'll also talk about some of the sort of soft influence you can have as a, as a councillor and you can get your interests and your political agenda across in non-political uh, ways really about emphasis so it's a ceremonial role so it's not like the lord mayor the mayor of london who actually runs london or the mayor of manchester who runs manchester it's a ceremonial role and we do have a political leader of the council who's susan brown whose pictures there who's labor leader of the council so what the mayor does so the the, the lord mayor does a number of different things and i'll give you lots of examples i won't dwell too much on this, but supporting local initiatives, acting as an ambassador for the city, facilitates, promotes different causes, encourages people, highlights relative relevant causes, and helps member of the local community to receive sort of recognition. Um, and the ceremonial role, you know, dressing up in gowns uh, and going to whether it's formal dinners or whether it's sort of formal AGMs of different things or whether it's sort of thing, um, uh, like Remembrance Day and, and services like that. So often dress up in, in the gowns to go to those sorts of services. And I chair for council and ensure the correct conduct of business. So people, when, when sort of kids, and I do a lot of stuff for schools, and in fact, I did one this week, they often say, well, what's, what's, the, what's the role like? And I say, well, it's sort of like a, a mix between, you know, the, the sort of speaker in the House of Commons, you know, who sort of conducts business 
and a sort of minor member of the royal family. So, you, you know, the, the speaker of the house doesn't really have any, any um, power, but they conduct business. And through that, you can, you know, have some influence on, on power because you decide what is correct and not what's not correct at council and have some control over the agenda. Uh, and a bit like a sort of minor royal is that, again, they have no real power except ceremonial role. And, but, you know, if someone gets a visit by the royals, they, they feel a little bit special. And it's sort of, um, you know, like a very minor royal, you know, when you go and visit things in, in Oxford and talk to voluntary groups, they feel a bit special and you can shed some light on their cause, which is great. You can get them a little bit more publicity. You can help them with fundraising. So all those things are, are really important. And on the issue of fundraising, it's traditional that the, the mayor selects two good causes to support during their year in office. Uh, and again, that, that sort of gives some emphasis to, to what you want to do during your year. And I chose Asylum Welcome and Low Carbon Hub. And I've already raised more than £5,000 for each of them. Uh, so that's um, good, good, reasonably good track record in terms of um, Lord Mayor's fundraising efforts. It would have been a lot more had we not had lockdown because I had two fundraisers cancelled. Uh, because typically fundraisers are normally towards the end of your term. So lockdown was at the end of March, actually just after my own fundraiser. Um, and then I had two other fundraisers, the, the sort of standard, I had two other fundraisers planned, which unfortunately never, never happened. So, oh, so, um, so, so yeah, so we, so what sort of, is it like sort of summing up some of those roles? Well, there's a sort of, you know, the official role you have as a sort of ambassador for the city. So you can welcome people into the law based parley, have use of that room exclusively for, for yourself. And so you can use that to host events. You can use that to sort of welcome visiting dignitaries of which I've done, had many. Um, there's a law mayor's car, which I rarely used. Um, in fact, I couldn't even find a picture of me and the law mayor's car. That's a former law mayor in the car. Um, but it's a sort of electric hybrid mini and it, I've been pushing for it to go to fully, fully electric and uh, it is about to go fully electric, but I rarely, I rarely used it. I did go on a mini rally though. Um, uh, so uh, from, from the, um, BMW plant. Uh, so, but yeah, I rarely use that. I mostly cycle to events, but I get a car and drive if I need to for, for events, which are distant. Chairing council, in fact, you can see just another member there speaking. Um, so I try to, as, as chair of council, try and make it as open and democratic as possible, provide as much public access and encourage members of the public to speak and for councillors to, to probably, properly address what was said. Uh, and obviously make sure that, that business people were polite and civil to each other and that we got through the business uh, in good time and that where possible, you know, parties, different people from different political parties collaborated with each other. So if there were two or three motions on the agenda that were similar, you know, why don't people get together and see if you can come up with some common wording that, that people, a composite motion that people can agree. Also the role as influencer, so this is actually, I think at my mayor making, um, but, but there are lots of opportunities to address people uh, some of whom are also in uh, positions of far more influence and power than I am. Uh, others who are, you know, visitors. I've, I've addressed many, many groups before lockdown of, of visiting uh, students from around the world. Um, and, you know, inevitably and invariably, I'd be talking about climate change all the time. So uh, that became quite a theme. Um, so this is yeah a picture of my family at the at the mayor making, so a bit of a, a crazy uh, family. But what I think the point is is that those were different times then. When I accepted the role of Lord Mayor, as I said in September, twenty eighteen, the world was was very different to what it is now. Uh, not only was COVID, you know, eighteen months away. Um, XR hadn't been formed, even so they, they hadn't had their first rally in London. So um, the talk of climate and ecological crisis really wasn't up the political agenda. Brexit, of course, had, you know, we'd had the vote in 2016, but 
you know, it, you know, in, in 28, September 2018, it was all meant to be wrapped up well before I got elected. So I hadn't sort of thought that would still be an issue. And the refugee crisis, and obviously I chose Asylum Welcome back in 2018 uh, to be one of my good causes. I mean, the refugee crisis, if not over, at least abated and gone from headlines. So really, since then, the world has changed. You know, I've been faced, hence the title of my talk, you know, with, with lockdown, Brexit and the climate emergency were all things which very much sort of shaped the year in office. And indeed, the last since March has been almost entirely dictating how things have been run. So I thought I'd just sort of talk a little bit about sort of Brexit, the lot, you know, COVID and and the climate emergency and some of the things I've sort of done. So um, on the sort of Brexit, you know, when I took office, I have always been very active, you know, in, in Oxford for Europe and other campaigns. And so I used the position the platform of, of mayor to speak out very much at rallies and at public speaking events, um, you know, in a politically impartial way, but because the city council was almost uniformly uh, against Brexit, uh, it was quite easy for me and no one stopped me from being quite sort of open and, and vocal on the issue of sort of Brexit. And in fact, when I did the a Twin Towns tour, so uh, the Lady Mayoress Elise and I went on a, a tour of our Twin Towns in February uh, this year, just before lockdown, and, and ex you know, extensively tweeted about it and, and um, it, you know, it was, it was I labelled it as a missing EU already Twin Towns train tour, so very much a sort of political agenda underpinning it um, and tweeted many things, you know, with that hashtag um, to, to a range of followers. And I think just actually it's a good point to talk about Twitter. There, although previous Lord Mayors had used sort of Twitter accounts, uh, as a, for, uh, I set up the Oxford Lord Mayor Twitter account, which is uh, one way I thought an important and increasingly important way of communicating with people directly. So I set up the Oxford Lord Mayor Twitter account with the media office at the town hall. So it will be a, an account now, a sort of legacy of my time as Lord Mayor that next, see, um, next Lord Mayors will hopefully use that Twitter account. I've built up, you know, a couple of thousand followers. Um, and I hope that will sort of add to the democratic accountability of the Lord Mayor and provide a good way of people knowing what their civic office holders are doing. So that's a sort of a side um, juncture, really, but I think important to, to the way I sort of treated that, that position. On the climate emergency, of course, I, I um, selected Low Carbon Hub as one of my good causes and, and raised money for them. It has to be said that they, they were incredibly successful at fundraising themselves during my year in office, although at the time when I started, they were sort of, you know, doing share issues for local renewable energy, but actually very, um, sort of a, a very low key level. Since then, they've got millions, literally millions of pounds of fundraising. And while I can't claim to be responsible for, for that in the slightest, I, it, it did help. They've told me it did help them with sort of credibility of, of the low carbon hub. I did set up a climate change fund as well uh, as a means of small people with without the minimum amount of money necessary to invest. You have to a minimum of 250 pounds if you want to invest in a in a low carbon hub share issue because of the administrative cost of is, is too prohibitive for smaller amounts of money. Uh, I did set that up as a crowdfunding, so raised a couple of thousand pounds for that. And, and what happens is that gets invested in renewable energy and the returns on that go to the city council into their general grants fund. So it'll be an ongoing legacy benefit. Again, it will be forever, even if no one puts any more money in it, it'll be a, a, you know, a few hundred pounds a year will go into good causes um, in Oxford into the small grants fund, which is then available for everyone to use. I said I did lots of talks on the climate emergency uh, uh, to everyone who would listen, basically, <laughs> to, to, to schools, um, to larger audiences, 
uh, to visiting dignitaries. I you know, gave talks when I was away on the Twin Towns to all our Twin Towns to sharing experiences and made sure on that agenda that we were, I was meeting up with all the people who had that interest so I could learn stuff and bring it back, share our experiences, but also learn from them. I did a, um, so I was asked to, can, to, to address a conference in Canada uh, on renewable energy systems in Oxford, because uh, Lord Mayor gets lots of these invitations. Uh, I refused because I said I didn't want to fly, but I did say, I mean, there's quite a few of these conferences you get invited to as Lord Mayor to speak, because many uh, people in other countries think that the Lord Mayor is, is you know, has, um, uh, has sort of real responsibilities and, and duties and have a sort of uh, executive role because many mayors around the world do. They don't realise in Oxford it's largely ceremonial. So you still get lots of these invitations. Uh, and I, I always refused places where I needed to fly. And in fact, I never flew to any event during my year in office. Um, so I, I sort of refused, but I always said, um, I will send you a video and I'll join you by Skype. And everyone said, oh, no, sorry, don't worry. <laughs> but Canada didn't. They came back to me and said, yeah, OK, if you want to send us a video, send a video. So I thought it better be a good one. So I spent a lot of time with and we have a, a, a sort of media officer who does record videos and does is, is really good. And so I did some footage. I wrote a script. And we did a sort of spent a couple of days doing the filming and it ended up quite a, a reasonable video uh, and it even got submitted for an award. So that's quite good. I don't know if I've actually won an award yet, but it got submitted for an award. So I set a rather hard bar. So I didn't do any more videos after that because I thought, didn't think I could really get any better than that. Um, obviously, the climate emergency was declared just before I became Lord Mayor in January 2019 and a motion that Dick and I put to council but it did create that momentum which continued on throughout um, my, my year time in office. And indeed we had the citizens assembly which was triggered by that motion. Uh, we also had a climate emergency review group which I sat on, which came up with a number of different recommendations. And although sort of COVID has halted a lot of those, uh, those things being enacted, it has, I think, created a very different uh, atmosphere within Oxford, I think, you know, the ideas around climate emergency, and I hope I've had a role in that, have sort of been more widely accepted and have broader political support. And as a result of that, I think we're seeing with COVID as well, some real, real changes. Um, so I did also uh, promise to be a net zero Lord Mayor. And what did that mean? So that meant that I used my bike where possible. The Lord Mayor's car, as I said, is a hybrid mini. I used it quite rarely. I haven't traveled anywhere on, on civic duties by air travel. Although having said that, I was sort of narrowly saved by COVID because I was expected to go to Perm in Russia um, around about the time of the elections in, uh, that, uh, that were abandoned in May, uh, 2020. I had worked out a way to get there by train, but it would have been so close to the date of the local elections. I think I probably would have had to fly to avoid being absent for the local elections here. But uh, I did visit all the twin towns by train. Um, and, and I'm now at the moment doing all the sort of carbon accounts for my year in office as Lord Mayor and going to be offsetting any, any residual emissions that are there. But I can say they're pretty small uh, and they're mainly due to that train trip across Europe. Um, so, yeah, and, and I just, this was just uh, at a, at the uh, car free day. So this was a car free day, uh, which unfortunately didn't happen this year, which is a bit bad, I think. It happened last year, uh, 2019, as you can see there, 22nd of September in that sign. Uh, and I think that's one of the times when I introduced my famous t shirt. So I, I don't have it on now, but I have, because I wanted to cycle different places. Um, uh, and I thought I couldn't cycle in chains. These are pretty heavy. Um, I had a T-shirt printed with the chains on it and wore that. And that became sort of almost more famous than me uh, because I wore it on several occasions. In fact, I was, I was riding it, uh, wearing it on a bike ride. I did a 50 kilometer charity bike ride near just after I got the T-shirt. 
and I stopped at one of the sort of watering holes on the way, and this is obviously around the county, and someone came up to me and said, who are you then? I said, well, Lord, Lord Mayor of Oxford, uh, thank you. And he goes, well, those are your chains. I said, well, yeah. He said, well, they can't the city afford anything better? So I think it sort of created a little bit of a stir, a little bit of sort of um, eyebrow raising in certain quarters, but I think it's it, it made the point I was trying to make. Uh, so COVID, so I've done also quite a, a lot around COVID. I've been doing enormous amounts of social media. In fact, I recorded another video today um, for to go out for city council to put out urging people to sort of um, to take notice of all the different um, rules and regulations we've got about, you know, um, you know uh, hands, face, space, and the rule of six, just urging people as we're sort of on the edge of a, a red alert, going into further lockdown in Oxford, trying to urge people. I did a, a, a message out previously last time, we were in amber alert and we went back down to yellow alert. Again, part of the overall communications the city are doing. Um, near the beginning of lockdown, I visited the sort of distribution hubs where we're doing food parcels and everything and help pack some food parcels. Um, I also said did messages to our twin towns, a message of, of uh, support and solidarity. Uh, I did a sort of bike ride around the city, sort of my one hour of exercise, if people remember those days, and did some video of, of the city centre and sort of put that out. And I also did a music video uh, to support our NHS. So that was quite interesting. You can just see uh, that sort of there. And that was good fun, actually, to do a music video. I'm not sure anyone really thought it was a worthy quality of a Lord Mayor and again raised a few eyebrows. But I got a chance to sort of show off a few of my colourful shirts. Again, on refugees and asylum seekers, I, I tried to sort of do that. I supported the Diversity League, which was a sort of local football teams of refugees and asylum seekers and went to several of their matches and, and helped them with some fundraising. Um, I spoke at many events, um, uh, both ones that Asylum Welcome organised as one of the good causes and also at many other events to do with refugees and asylum seekers, probably about half a dozen, ten events, something like that. And actually one of the things I, I was able to do um, uh, was award freedom of the city to Benny Wender, who's probably one of our more famous uh, asylum seekers, who if people don't know, he's from uh, West Papua, uh, he was persecuted by the Indonesian government and was tortured and imprisoned and he escaped uh, from West Papua and sought refuge in, in the UK. He was granted asylum uh, and then came to, to live in Oxford and set up the Free West Papua Movement which has been lobbying through the UN for recognition for the, for the state of nation of West Papua. He's a lovely guy and I was able to sort of use that to, to make it, give him freedom of the city. So, um, and it was a, a really nice, lovely event that we were able to host at the, at the town hall. And um, I think it's helped their campaign very much. Didn't do me any favors with the Indonesian government. They sent me some rather stern letters and sent some diplomats around to see me. Um, but uh, I think that was all, uh, they, 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 they calmed down after a while. And of course, that was just the flavor of some of the things. There's many, many more things they're doing. I had to, to sing at the carol service with the Lady Mary's. Um, went to many religious events, you know, um, whether it's sort of um, you know Sikh events or it's Islamic events, whether it's church events, and and represented the city there, um, went to many sort of jumble sales and and those sorts of uh, types of events uh, at the St Giles Fair, um, went to support and and recognise people who've done great things. That's in the top left hand corner. That's Richard, who uh, did a litter pick along the Thames uh, in, in Oxford, and I went and welcomed him at the end of his litter pick to thank him, got him some publicity for his work. And obviously he felt recognized and went on to do more litter picks, largely as a result of being recognized and thanked by the city. So um, under normal times, it's normally about 400 events each year. So it's, you can, it's a considerable number of events. It's quite often you do two or three a day. Um, 
but now it's more like two or three a week um, since lockdown. But still, I think the ones I'm doing now are actually taking a little bit more effort, you know, doing a video, uh, joining people online. It takes a little bit more time because you, you have to prepare. You can't just go around and meet and greet people, which you do at many of these large events. Just say hello, ask people questions. They ask you questions, very informal. When you do stuff online, it's a lot more formal, and so you have to prepare a bit more. So, so although there's fewer events, I think they do take, each event takes a little bit more time. So the expect the unexpected, really. Um, so my first day, um, as Lord Mayor, I welcomed Prince Harry to Oxford. Um, and that was a bit of a sort of initiation. Um, I, no one told me I had to make a speech. Uh, I had to make a speech off the cuff uh, in front of Prince Harry. We were unveiling a plaque at Barton Community Centre. Um, you're not meant to talk about what royals say to you, but uh, you can probably just see in that photo, I had one of my normal colourful shirts on. And he did ask me whether he could swap shirts with me because he was admiring my shirt. But a very nice guy. Um, I made a vid music video as a support of the NHS staff. I made a short film I mentioned about renewable energy. I spent 10 days visiting the Twin Towns by train. Uh, so that's in the Netherlands and Poland and Germany. I was a guest news reader for Association of Blind Audio Newsletter. And hearing your own voice back and sitting there with with professionals who are well practiced you realize that i've got a little bit more voice training i need to do i played and sung get sung uh, on stage several times to raise money for charity i had to provide a vegan recipe for a russian cookbook they didn't really i had they had to explain to me what ingredients they actually had uh, and i appeared on russian television um I uh, participated in a Tai Chi demonstration. I was actually just welcoming some Chinese visitors from the, from the town where Tai Chi originated. And they, they presented me with a sort of whole Tai Chi outfit and then asked me to join a demonstration. So I'd, I'd not really done Tai Chi before, but, but I just copied the person next to me and I think I got away with it. But someone videoed it, it was rather embarrassing. Uh, and of course, I had to deal with all the sort of fallout effects of Brexit, the climate emergency and COVID. So um, here's just a couple of those sort of extracts from that. That's just to prove I was on Russian television. Uh, and that's me on there just doing the um, news reading. That's me on stage. And uh, that's just a, in a very small picture of someone videoed it with their phone. That's me doing a Tai Chi demonstration down at the bottom. Um, and that's the music video and, and uh, the film I did. So just to say, I sort of alluded to it, there are other civic office holders. It's not just me. You always have these other supporting um, characters, if you like, a deputy Lord Mayor who deputises for the Lord Mayor when required and chairs meeting of the council if I'm, I'm not there. Sheriff of Oxford has specific roles, and I was previously Sheriff and Deputy Lord Mayor before becoming Mayor. So you look after Port Meadow and you administer the Freeman ceremony, where you sort of, which the Lord Mayor is also present at, where you make people the Freeman of the city of Oxford. Uh, the Freeman used to be char in charge of the city before there were elected councillors. And they still have sort of uh, uh, an active group of Freeman who, who meet. And, uh, and also a sheriff can deputise for the Lord Mayor and attend some of the functions in their own right. And the Lady Mayoress, who's on this call now, uh, is official consort. So the Lady Mayoress accompanies me to events and acts also as an ambassador of city and council and, and attends functions in her own right. So there are some functions which are, are traditionally just for the Lady Mayoress to attend. And finally, I also have the Lord Mayor's Sergeant Who's a, who has to accompany me whenever I go out and I'm wearing the real chains or the gowns. So these, I should say, are the replica chains. I wouldn't be allowed to have the real chains at home uh, because they're far too valuable. In fact, they're irreplaceable. These are replicas, a reasonably good replica. And this is what I wear most of the time uh, at, at formal events, normally in the town hall, I wear the real chains. And when, I, and when I do go out and about with the real chains, I always have to have the Lord Mayor Sergeant there with that mace, that powerful looking mace, which he's, you know, 
reliably informs me he would take a swipe at someone with it were they to make an attempt on the chains. Uh, but the law mess sergeant assists me through sort of understanding what some of the, the weird and quaint and wonderful uh, traditions associated with the Lord Mayor and some events you really need to know that because there's some really weird and wonderful things you have to do, uh, including things like the gloving ceremony, which is this year just being cancelled, but where you have to go and um, have it where take a pair of white gloves and hand them on to someone. Uh, it's very weird, and, but that's sort of the traditions which persist. Uh, and th they're wonderful. I think traditions uh, create a sense of place, and I think that's that's quite important. But but some of them do seem a bit strange. So really, I've got hopefully some time for questions. If anyone wants to to ask any questions, and I don't know how we're going to handle the questions. Dick, are you going to facilitate that if people put them in the chat? Yeah, I mean that's one way of doing it. People could put questions in the chat, and I can pull them together very happily. Um, or I guess, yeah, I mean the main thing is about making sure we're speaking one at a time. I think um, I do have a question already in the chat, although of course you can see it as well. Um, um, Barbara Harris White, former neighbour of mine, um, says you haven't mentioned the universities. Um, how do you get on and how does the Lord Mayor fit in or not with uh, the universities? I guess particularly the, the old university because that's uh, been around since the beginning of the Lord Mayor's almost. Yeah, so there are very many uh, events, university events, as say particularly from Oxford Uni University that the Lord Mayor gets invited to. Um, perhaps the most prestigious of those is N Senior, which happens every year. Uh, when you're sort of hearing from, um, well, Elise can probably say more about what N Senior is than I can, but basically you you uh, uh, gather in the, in the Radcliffe camera, not Radcliffe camera, uh, the uh, brain's gone. Sheldonian? Help me out. Yes, Sheldonian. Sheldonian. And, um, and sort of, well, you know, have... Uh, Do you want me to explain, Craig? You're probably better at this than me and being. Well, I've been to Encina quite a few times because I went as, as Lord Mayor and as Sheriff and as Lady Mayoress. Um, so Encina is the annual honorary degree ceremony for the for Oxford University, um, and um, so that's where you get to see the good, great, and the good being given honorary degrees. Um, it's at the Sheldonian, which is on, on a hot day, very uncomfortable. If you're wearing your robes, it's not at, it's uncomfortable, but at least people can't see you shifting your bum to try and get get rid of the cramp. Um, it's quite a long ceremony, but it's very, very interesting. I was um, there were some amazing you get to see some amazing people getting awards, not just academics, but people from music. Um, and then you go on for lunch at one of the colleges and then there's an afternoon, a big afternoon tea event in one of the college gardens. So that's it. It's, it's an annual event. You only really get to go if you're mayor. Yeah, we had a, a private um, uh, concert uh, performance from Yo-Yo Ma, which was incredible. Um, and yeah, so there's so, uh, so you do get to go to lots of lots of dinners, formal dinners. Um, at the universities for all, all types of things. Um, and indeed, uh, other sort of, so Magdalen College School as well, uh, because they're in my ward, uh, they invited me to several events, so many formal events as well. Um, and do go to Brooks, uh, not, not, they don't really have the same sort of formal dinners, but they do have lots of sort of meetings and research events. Um, so I went to, to several there, but, there's no sort of formal tie up. It's just a sort of courtesy that the civic office holders are invited to major university events. Many yeah, there was a formal tie up once, wasn't there? Because I, I, I accompanied when you, when you couldn't do it, when you were deputy lord there, I accompanied Elise to something at Christchurch and where I learned that uh, the university used to appoint councillors. Uh, I think a dozen members of city council were appointed by the university. I think that was as late as the 1960s. Yeah, there was there's a was a historic link before the um, local government act. 1974. I met the last living sit university appointed councillor when I was Lord Mayor, and he was very old. Yeah. 
So that wasn't a great answer, but the people there were to help me with that. My... Any more questions? Uh... You could either put them in the chat if you know where that is down the bottom, if you're on an Android or Windows device and you can type as Barbara did a, a question up there, or I guess wave frantically like Caddy is doing. And uh, can you unmute yourself, Caddy? I just wanted to say, because it, it's obviously pretty impressive listening to what, Kate, what Craig has been able to achieve over the last 18 months. And I just wondered, to what extent that sort of impetus will be able to continue after he's left the office of Lord Mayor? Will it be the same kind of kudos? Uh, well, you can always call yourself a former Lord Mayor, which carries some sort of weight, I guess. Um, but, but, uh, but, but there'll be a new Lord Mayor from the end of November, who's going to be Mark Ligo, um, who's very different to me. You know, he's got his, his strengths. I've got my strengths. They're, they're sort of very different interests. Um, so, so I think that the, the emphasis of the role will certainly change. Every Lord Mayor likes to stamp their own sort of identity on the role and no doubt Mark will do the same. You know, I've had obviously quite a lot of chats with him. He's, he's been shadowing me for a, for a bit just be, before lockdown. He was shadowing more than now. And, you know, he's very interested in sport, particularly in youth activities. And so he'll, that will be his emphasis. Um, but he said he's he's very active on social media and he said he'll continue the social media account, which which is good. And I think that's sort of a bit of a legacy that I can sort of leave behind. But yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you get some Lord Mayors who are more active and, and more proactive, I should say, than others. I, I've been one of the more proactive ones, I think. Um, and it really depends on, on what you want to make of the role. Uh, and yeah, there's a few other questions I've just noticed. Um, Sue Tibble said, what was the best meal I've had as Lord Mayor at a function? So one of the things I, I always, you know, um, you know, wrote ahead and said, well, I'm vegan and you've got to do a vegan meal. So um, that's um, raised a few eyebrows as well in some quarters. But I think also it was a good thing to say. I mean, in reality, I, I you know, when I'm at home, I'm always vegan. When I'm out, I sometimes lapse into vegetarianism occasionally. Um, but but we always said we're vegan uh, and to make a point of that. The best meal, um, oh, that will be difficult. Um, Elise, have you got a best meal? I can't sort of think of any in particular that stood head and shoulders above any others. I mean, you had to be one of the university meals. That would have been the highest quality catering. But I'm trying to think which which university meal would have stood head and shoulders above another. I think the lunch where Yo-Yo Ma performed while we were eating was pretty epic. New College, wasn't it? Yeah. New College, yeah. That was a good good food. Yeah, but uh, you, if you're not careful, your waistline can expand when you become Lord Mayor, so it's quite challenging. Um, uh, well, and this, this was, thanks for all you've done. Well, in a way, will you be working as well? But I laughed at to save Redbridge Meadow from destruction. Well, you know, the, as I said, the Lord Mayor doesn't have any sort of executive powers to dictate policy. Um, obviously, the Greens, you know, have been trying to protect Greenbelt land and, you know, wrote um, a very different, I mean, Dick wrote the submission on the local plan which dictates all this, you know, how land is allocated for development in the city. That local plan went through uh, last year, despite uh, best efforts by the Greens to change it. So we can still, you know, put up a fight. And often these things are maybe a bit late in the day because the time to object to things is when they're put in a local plan. But I think there is still a chance to, to save various pieces of land that are under threat of development. And certainly, you know, after being Lord Mayor, I'll just be as active. Uh, I'll be able to freer to be more politically active than I have been as Lord Mayor. Although I've pushed the boundaries quite a lot. 
So next one from Bob, if the city council is swallowed up or part of the one Oxfordshire proposals, what will happen to the Lord Mayor? That's a good question. I suspect no one knows the answer, <laughs> but I would have thought that uh, the law, role of Lord Mayor will probably continue as a ceremonial role. Um, you have sort of chairs of councils and uh, in the cities and districts around uh, that are sort of ceremonial hangovers that still sort of exist. So I suspect that selecting the Lord Mayor might be a bit of a different process, but I think the role of Lord Mayor will probably still exist. I can't see that local government and reorganisation in itself would put in place a necessary legislation to, to, to stop it happening. The Lord Mayor is sort of, after all, a sort of uh, there by grace of the Queen and royalty, so it's a very different sort of chain of command, if you like. So, uh, any other? There's, there's a question there, I mean, which I, I think actually you kind of answered that, that uh, you do still actually work as a councillor and represent St Mary's Ward, do you not? Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a question around representing a ward. Yeah, so it's got <coughs> all the work as a councillor, you know, representing local people and city on committees still continues while you're a Lord Mayor. You don't get any special dispensation or any special privileges. So when I'm not wearing the chain, when I'm, you know, have my councillor hat on, I'm treated by other members of council, just like any, any councillor, any other councillor. Um, but obviously, when I put the chain on, I have that to assume the role of Lord Mayor, then I, I'm seen differently in the eyes of, of other councillors. <coughs> Excuse me. I was quite intrigued, and uh, you might or might not want to uh, answer a question, but um, councillor allowances, people are very... Uh, some people have got the idea we're on fat salaries, um, I think most councillors take a fairly hefty pay cut in order to do the job effectively. Um, the allowance isn't pay for doing the job. The Lord Mayor does get an allowance, but I seem to remember you saying that most of that disappears on having to buy raffle tickets and buy entry to the dinners you're invited to. Is that right? Yeah, so, so you're right. Councillors get paid, I think it's about £4,000, £4,500 a year. So it's certainly less than minimum wage for the work that's done. Um, the Lord Mayor does get a small additional allowance, about 2,000, I think, extra year, 2,500 a year. It all comes bundled together, so you don't really know what it is. Um, so, um, and yes, you have to pay out, you go to a lot of these events, especially these formal events in other parts of the county, where, which are fundraising events, and you have to spend a lot of money. You have to, some of them are auctions where you have to bid you know, money for things. Uh, the tickets cost often 50 or 100 pounds to get in. Um, so, yes, and, and obviously you have to cover all your own expenses as well. So, so yes, it's uh, certainly you don't do it for the money. Um, and certainly it's if being a councillor, you get paid less than minimum wage. Certainly as Lord Mayor, you get paid a fraction of minimum wage. So I think, you know, councillors on the city at least are fairly good value in terms of the, the value they deliver for the people of Oxford in terms of the, the compensation they get. I would say so. Ex executive members, of course, of council. If you're on the city executive on the cabinet, um, you get a multiple of allowances. So you don't get a normal councillors, you get like two or three multiple of the allowance. So, so if you're a sort of, the you know, the leader of council, uh, I mean, all that is in the public domain, but I think they get something like um, three times a normal allowance plus an allowance for being leader of their group uh, and various other uh, chairs. So I think and maybe get through fifteen thousand pounds, something like that. Yeah. Well, I noticed that we're knocking on time. Yeah, we were going to give it an hour, and it's two minutes to go. So I, I think I probably ought to say uh, any last questions before. Uh, we wrap it up. I'm going to hand over to Caddy in due course, but uh, any other questions? You want to just flap if you can see your hand, or you can put a, a, a blue hand up if you know how to do that. No? In that case, Craig, 
thank you very much for the tour of the job. I think you've given us some impression that isn't it isn't just a matter of a couple of dinners a year. Uh, you say sometimes two or three engagements a day, 400 in a year. And on top of that, you've been um, incredibly busy as a ward councillor as well. And I honestly don't know how you've done it um, without cracking up. And I don't know whether there's time to really have, be close to cracking up, but I mean, the, it's quite a daunting thing to do and a rather weird thing to do. It's not necessarily something that people are uh, set up to do. I mean, some people really, I think, are quite a loss how to do it. But I think I've been to a number of events that you've been at, and I would say you look very mayoral whilst uh, managing to not be aloof, which I think is quite an achievement, actually. Um, so thank you very much for everything that you've done. Thank you for sharing it with us. Um, I hope it gives people a new understanding of what mayors, the Lord Mayor of Oxford does and doesn't do and what they are and what they aren't. Um, I might just comment briefly that chairing a full council meeting is absolutely not for the faint hearted and uh, requires being far more on top of the agenda than any councillor sitting in the bench on the benches. So. Uh, you know, I think you are under underplayed that one, I think, you know, and it must have been very daunting to do that. But anyway, thank you ever so much for that. And I hope we've all enjoyed it very much and learned quite a lot about Oxford City Council and its Lord Mayor.